Australia's future is doomed. Let's have a look. Good morning, everyone. Florian here, and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your Stein or camping cup of instant coffee to save money during these tough times. Settle down, and let's have a little bit of a chat. I want to make an argument why, well, housing is never going to be affordable. We'll continue have we'll continue to have a push of younger people calling for more government involvement in their lives, turning us into a nanny. More than a nanny state, a nanny nation. And I would also argue the reason why the Greens are gaining in popularity with their insane economic policies like rent control. They're putting things forward that have been proven time and time again historically to fail. So the only reason people would support these policies is if they either want to bullshit to the masses to get in place or they have no understanding of the impact of these policies in other parts of the world. They can't learn from others. Which one do you think it is? But, well, what I want to talk about today is it's a comment. A comment a viewer left on a video I I put out yesterday. And what we'll do is we will jump to this, this comment right here. Now, this was about the video was about... Business is going under. An article from news.com.au about, well, highest levels of business failures since COVID and another one about our quality of life going under. And here is the comment. Can you see that? So, from Craig B. I don't know why you guys all come up with your random number things on my, as a YouTube content creator. I, I don't know. It just happens, guys. I was in business for a long time, sold out after COVID. I asked myself, why bother? It's a mug's game. Now, for those of you that aren't aware, uh, I'm an architect. My wife and I have had a practice nearly 15 years now. And a few years ago, we scaled completely back. At one point, we had 12 people in our team. We were working for big national brands on a variety of projects, and it was tough to walk away with much in your pocket after just all the cost issues and challenges of running a business. We learned some valuable lessons along the way. But now, we've, we've scaled right back. It's just the two of us. I don't even bother with an office. You can get away without it these days. And I'm making more money than when I had a whole team and my revenue was much higher. It's funny like that, isn't it? So I'm, I'm speaking from experience myself here, and I can relate to a lot of what these people have to say, and I think this causes a lot of problems in Australia. Employment laws have become so hard to navigate, every, everyone wants a work-life balance. Oh, we have my old man was helping us, and he was trying to apply 80s <laughs> employment practices to current day. You can't do that. And he was shocked at some of the stuff people get away with. It, it's, and I would, uh, well, I'll make an argument that you have many of these bigger businesses, and this is called crony capitalism, where they implement laws, legislations, rules, restrictions for their own benefit. They get in bed with the unions and they destroy the, the potential competition and innovation that comes from small business, which is what we did here in Australia. So everyone wants a, everyone wants a work life balance tips to, tipped towards life. When does the work get done? We notice that because we hire a lot of young people as their first professional job in architecture. When we went through a QT and it's changed now, you were in the office one day a week, so you'd have to get a job in a practice one day a week. No, no sorry, wait, 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 wrong. I'm getting I'm getting old. <clears throat> you were at uni one day a week. You had to go in a work in a practice four days a week. Now, four days a week is enough to run a project, is enough to learn a lot, is enough to be so busy with workload that you only ever date girls you meet in architecture. So you get married, have start a firm, and, and have seven children. That that's that's exa- exactly what we had. <laughs> we 
if, if we had a dome, we'd probably run away from each other back at uni. Anyway, uh, that's how, that's my lived experience. And it was great because you got real world experience. You got exposed to real projects. You could contrast the fantasy excitement of university work with the mundane reality of real work. And it meant you had a realistic view of the profession you were getting into. But you didn't have any work-life balance. That didn't exist. That was for the holidays. That was for the end of year when you took two weeks off from everything and just went bushwalking every day. Uh, you managed someone at work, and that's now called bullying. Ah, th Now, this is interesting. All the new, the new rule changes with regards to workplace bullying. My mother-in-law was discussing this because she works for a large, large company. And now they've got to pin responsibility on her, on an employee, if, to intervene if she sees bullying among other people. And for some people, they don't want to get involved in other people's mess. And as, as, a, as a business owner, this is another thing you have to deal with. I mean, oh, I, I'm sure some of the, the uh, discussions I had where... Let's just say my Prussian and Austrian combined heritage manifest itself where you can be blunt when someone does a shit job. I mean, is it considered bullying if they're crying when you tell them they did a shit shit house job on something? Probably. I guess no resilience anymore. Oh, this is one thing that they wanted to get rid of in the architecture school. What you do in architecture is a lot of project work. So you get your, your work, you pin it up on the wall, at this is the end of semester or middle of semester. You haven't slept. You're feeling like shit. You've been working all through the night to get this thing finished. <laughs> Incidentally, that's I, I met Rachel in the computer lab. But see, the, the guys can't even meet girls like that anymore. University is all online. You, how can you meet a girl at the computer labs and go out for a beer rather than working when you're doing it online? The, the future sucks. Anyway, you pin up your work. And people tear it to shreds. It's a critique. So you'll have you'll have your maybe your lecturer or your tutor, maybe and some guests. They'll invite guests to come in and criticize the work and give you valuable feedback. Now it can really sting if you've done something shit, if you've made a mistake, it can really get to you. But it is invaluable in learning. And you need to build resilience because <laughs> when you're working, you gotta cop it from everyone anyway. You think builders are gonna Got to be gentle on the architects. Oh, boy. Taxes are ridiculous in this country. We get taxed on income we've already paid tax on. Yeah, I mean, the uh, people don't, don't get it. They don't understand. So you run a business, earn good income, and pay 45% tax on your income, then another 10% when you spend what's left. Oh, and, and don't forget, if you want to have a beer... Half of that's tax. Every time you drive in your car, you're paying a chunk of tax for that. Getting a, if you want to have a smoke or a cigar, you're paying tax on that. Tax, tax, tax. Business overheads here are out of control. Fees on top of taxes. I ASIC. Oh, yeah, ASIC. Employees get paid. Get all the perks. 12% super. Every leave type i.e. parental long service. We need to we don't need long service leave anymore. Long service leave was introduced back when we were a colony on the edge of the world and people would be able to take months off to go back to England and come back. That's why long service leave exists. There's no reason why it should exist now. The reward for working somewhere for a long time should be the fact that you've had a job for a long time. This is insane and time this this needs to be getting rid of gotten rid of. Good luck trying to get that through. Um, super, super just keeps going up. And, that, and people don't appreciate it. They don't see it as part of their package. They don't, oh, that's just something else. I can't spend that. Who cares? Small businesses struggle to pay. Yeah, then you have all the, the stupid lefties. Oh, well, if you can't afford that, you shouldn't be in business. Yada, 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 yada. This is why I quit Twitter. I, I quit Twitter because I was I was arguing with these dumb idiots, Re really just dumb people that have got no idea that that oh maybe they were trolling. They're leaving these comments there to just piss people off, and oh they they just want Australia to turn into a shithole where everything's run by big business. You want competition and innovation. 
If you're silly enough to give customer accounts, then you'll bank as well. Oh, yeah, you're right. Everyone gets paid before you. One thing that really frustrated me was how much easier it would be for my staff working under me to get a mortgage than me as a business owner. Uh, and when it goes ass up, thieving liquidators come in and steal what's left and bankrupt you. Yep, well, there you go. I mean, that's what liquidators do, isn't it? They're not there to rescue anything. Let's not even get into the capital gains tax. You make a good investment and pay up to 50% depending on when you bought and sold. I, I think the reason is you've got a whole class of people that probably are not successful enough to realize how many taxes they paid or they're in an insulated bubble. You know, they've never actually held all of their earnings in their hands. So if you're a civil servant, you've always been paid by someone else. You've never touched your own tax money. It's always taken out beforehand. So you think, oh, thank you, daddy, mummy, government, giving me giving me money back at the at, at a tax return. Oh, thank you so much. That's a bonus. They, they don't, because they haven't had to transfer that money out of their account physically, they don't realize what it actually is. They haven't had that psychological pain. This is why I make the argument again and again and again that people need to be paid all of their taxes and individuals need to do pay as you go. Not the, not the employers. The employers need to stop being the bloody parent for these people. They need to individually pay. I know, I know it's going to be a shit show. I know it would be a complete and utter bloody disaster, but we should do it just so people experience that. Because this type of stuff, going through this, it changes your political opinion. You mature, you grow, you become more experienced. And then all of a sudden, this happened to a guy at uni. You know, raving lefty, just hippy-dippy bullshit. We get a lot of them in architecture, guys. I mean, look at, look at the green senators that are architects. And I bumped into him just recently, actually, a few months ago. And he'd, he'd become hardened, <laughs> really hardened, worse than me about entitled workers not working, you know, you got to kick him up the ass, get a business manager in, yada, yada, yada. And I thought, oh, shit. Even I'm not that bad. Um, but yeah, no, it was funny to see reality setting, setting in. And, and I discuss, this is very common that I discuss with people. Um, why the F would I work my ass off? Why would I employ anyone these days? And this is a problem because these jobs that, that we were giving people their first start, in their careers. And I remember we had one guy, I, I, you know, he wanted to have a talk to me and I saw on his computer his resignation letter. We came and had a chat. He'd been offered a huge pay rise at a prestigious firm. And I was really happy for him. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going, that's the point. I mean, I'm frustrated that, you know, you get someone trained them up good. Oh, he's pretty good right from the beginning. Uh, but that's, part of it you know it's it's part of the reward of having a small business particularly if you give people a, a job and see them grow and develop and then you follow their career on linkedin they're doing insane these opportunities are going to disappear you're going to have the the bakers that are coming out of woolies that don't know how to bake because they just follow a recipe why would foreign companies set up business here this country is really effed up and gundy tiger says you're spot on i hope it gets better we've got 21 likes here for only nine hours on a small channel is pretty good and let, let's have a look at this this here okay i wanted to look at how many people are employed by small businesses five million people 42 percent of the private sector workforce in 2223 97.2 percent of all australian businesses were small business a small business is defined as having fewer than 15 people we are the majority of businesses in this country. Small businesses should have significantly more pulling power. Why the hell is any small business voting for left? For more government rules, for more regulation? I, I, I don't understand. I don't get it. I mean, this is, this, they got everything he's saying here. I was talking to my Sparky the other day. And he was dropping some truth bombs on me just about the challenges of running a business. And he's going, oh, I shouldn't be telling this to a customer. And I go, mate, I'm a small business owner too. I've been through all of this. I, I've, <laughs> I've experienced what, you, what you're saying here. I know what it's like. Because he, he I know, who was it? Another guy, another uh, gentleman in the construction game complaining about just the sense of entitlement people have. So let's, uh, let's have a bit of a, a chat about this one, eh? 
Thank you, Craig, for leaving that comment. Uh, I think it was spot on, mate. And I suspect many people here on the channel who have run a business can appreciate where you're coming from. And it, it's getting worse. Now, now this this bullying bloody thing. We, I mean, we have one guy, one staff member we had to fire. Make redundant. Because he was bullying another guy. He was bullying and picking on uh, one of the juniors we had there. He even made a nickname for him. Uh, and we just, we had to step in. We could change the whole culture in the office. Because we had quite a, a positive environment. And this was a, a friend from university that we had to let go because he was bullying his other staff. This should be a, well, here's the thing. In a small business, it's something that you should see as an owner pretty quick. And management should be able to jump on and address fast. In a big business, no, you got HR. So they need to implement these bullshit policies and things that, well, you know, then they'll, they'll just shift the risk down. They'll shift it onto the employee going, you know, oh, you, why didn't you intervene in this bullying that happened in the lunchroom? You were there, we weren't. It's your responsibility. So it's going to backfire. It's going to backfire and cause more issues. And, well, it's just going to be another thing where hiring someone, taking someone on board is going to be a poten potential risk or a pain in the ass that you have to deal with as a small business owner. You've got to think about it. I've... I've got so much work at the moment I could definitely do with an assistant. But I'll just work more rather than do that. That's why the video streams have been so lackluster over the last few months, guys, because it's just been so busy, which is, which is a good thing. I'm not complaining, but it's, you know, difficult to get content out. And, and also I'm living between two places. The NBN cable's been cut up by the plumber. I'm on doing it. It's all... all all fun and games, guys. Hopefully next year it'll be it'll be easier to to get the content out. But what Craig has said here, these are examples that we've everyone in small business has dealt with. And fundamentally, if we have a country that disincentivizes small business ownership to such a great extent, we're going to see a greater shift to the left, particularly among younger generations, because they're not going to have that entrepreneurial independent streak in them that pushes them out there to start things, that gives them a taste of reality, that makes them realize, wait a minute, why am I paying this, 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 and this for this? I don't need it. This is bullshit. Why is someone such and such so entitled for all these things? Try some reality. And why would you jump through these hoops when you can just invest in property, bro? Get a shit kicker job at Macca's, live at home, and just buy houses. The Australian dream. Anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts, opinions, and takes on this one. As always, I'll see you next time. Bye for now.